Your Honor, a 17-year-old girl should not know the feeling of getting stabbed. Your Honor, I should not have to remember the feeling of my body being inflicted with a knife over and over again. Thankfully, Madison Shemitz survived that attack by her ex-boyfriend. Now Spencer Pearson has learned his punishment for nearly killing Shemitz, wounding her mother, and a good Samaritan. I'm here before you today to take responsibility for my actions of June 3rd, 2023. And most importantly, I'm here to express my sincerest apology to Madison, Ms. Roger, Mr. Armstrong. I have the emotional sentencing and why the story isn't over. Welcome to Crime Fix. I'm Anjanette Levy. Madison Shemitz was nearly killed in June of 2023 when her ex-boyfriend, Spencer Pearson, attacked her with a knife at a restaurant in Ponte Vedra, Florida. Her mother, Jackie Rogue, was also injured trying to save her daughter, and a man named Kennedy Armstrong stopped the attack. The case is absolutely terrifying, and now Spencer Pearson has learned his punishment for the crimes. You'll hear from him, and more importantly, you'll hear from Madison Shemitz later. But first, a recap of how we got to this point. Madison was a 16-year-old girl who had dated Spencer for a relatively short amount of time, about six months. Spencer was a star football player and couldn't handle being told no that the relationship was over. It was a sunny day when Madison and her mom went to Mr. Chubby's wings for lunch. Spencer Pearson showed up and attacked Madison, stabbing her 15 times. Her mom tried to fight off Pearson. Kennedy Armstrong intervened. The body camera footage of the aftermath from the St. John's County Sheriff's Office is chilling. The EMTs and the deputies found an awful scene. There was a man laying on the ground wounded, and he's being treated for stab wounds. What is wrong with you? Hey, stay away. Okay? Yeah, there you go. Release him. Give me that everybody. third rescue kit. All, all three are really alive. I'm one hundred responsive. One stab in the chest. I had one stab in the head. head. One deputy reported that one of the victims was stabbed in the chest. An EMT worked desperately to save a man who's laying on the ground wounded. I need our crate kit from the airway back. Can we get our airway back for us? Airway, airway back. I need airway back. Oh, he's got it. That man who was wounded is Spencer Pearson. Pearson had tried to cut his own throat, and he is the suspect in this case who attacked Madison Shemitz and her mom. Thank you, thank you. Who was actually cutting himself? Was it this guy or? Yes, this, guy, this guy. He's a bad guy. The guy in the pink saved them. He ran from across the he parking lot and tackled them, tackled them and got them apart. We parked. When I walked up, he was lying here cutting his so I, but I was, but I was like, I was like, dude. So I just got on top of him, but he had so much. He was still like, all right. Madison's mother had tried to stop Spencer Pearson, and as you just heard, a man in a pink shirt, Kennedy Armstrong, was hurt as he tried to stop Pearson. My husband's the one that got it away from him. He was cutting his neck. He was cutting his neck, and my husband stopped him. He was like, got it away from him. Just wanted to make sure you knew that. Thank you. Appreciate it. I want to hold on. Deputies gathered as much information as they could, interviewing a server who spoke with Madison's mom right before the attack. The, mo the mother pulled me outside and asked me if the kid was eating or if he was just there by himself. And I was like, well, he's, he's eating. And she was like, oh, okay. And I was like, is everything all right? And she said, she said that they had, you know, just some kid stuff going on. They had broken up. Deputies also interviewed witnesses, including the people who stopped Spencer Pearson. <laughs> Love you, ma'am. Love you, brother. So, what the f happened? I just backed my truck in. Got off of work, and I see the f***ing guy on top of that girl right there. Okay. I saw that, and I just I heard yelling. I ran over and knocked him off, and I guess when I knocked him off, sliced me. It's crazy. Where's your wallet at? I, I gave it to him right there. Who's got his wallet? I have all his stuff. Yeah, let me, I just need his wallet repair. Right. I just want to write everything down. Kennedy Armstrong saved Madison's life. Man, you're a hero, man. You are a hero. 
Come on, bro. You're my hero, brother. I want to tell you about Upside. It's a free app that gets you cash back on things like gas and groceries and restaurants. This is real cash back. It's money that appears in your Upside app that you can transfer straight into your bank account. I used Upside when I went to Dunkin' recently for a cup of tea. I claimed an offer for Dunkin' on the app, paid as usual using a card and followed the steps, and I got cash back. It's so easy. You can also use Upside at places like Shell, Exxon, 7-Eleven, Taco Bell, and that's just to name a few. To find out how much you could earn, click the link in the description to download Upside or scan the QR code on your screen and use our promo code CRIMEFIX to get an extra 25 cents back on every gallon on your first tank of gas. That's promo code CRIMEFIX for extra cash back. Madison later met Armstrong. A photo of that meeting was posted on her GoFundMe page. Madison Victoria And this past May, Madison walked onto the stage at Ponte Vedra High School to thunderous applause where she collected her high school diploma. Then in July, Spencer Pearson pleaded guilty to two counts of first-degree attempted murder and one count of aggravated battery causing serious bodily injury. Now to the sentencing hearing. Spencer Pearson's attorneys argued that he was suffering from depression as they asked the judge to give him less time than a life sentence. Spencer Pearson's father, Daniel, testified and apologized to Madison, her mother, and Kennedy Armstrong. Uh, the, the first thing I want to say is I want to address the victims, uh, Madison, Jackie, Kennedy. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry this happened to you. Madison, you were always so sweet coming over. You were uh, such a beautiful person to be around. You were so good to our family. I'm sorry this happened to you. I think about you every day. I pray for you every day. You're a sweet soul. You're a beautiful person. I know that. I'm sorry. Jackie, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I know you've had to go through a, a world of hurt and uh, just dealing with all of this. I'm sorry. I pray for you to have peace. And I, uh, and forgiveness. And I just can't say I'm sorry enough. Y'all don't deserve this. Kennedy, thank you. Thank you for saving multiple lives. You are a hero. Daniel Pearson was asked about his concerns regarding his son's mental health and whether he sought help for him. And so prior to, prior to that here tomorrow, those two sessions in April 13, April 13, 2023, he had never seen a psychologist or a licensed mental health counselor for any reason? Uh, no. Okay. You said, though, he's, he's been struggling with anxiety and issues. I believe y'all have reported as, as young as elementary school, correct? Well, we saw anxiety uh -huh. there, but it was nothing that held him back. He still did well in school. He, uh, uh, it, I, I guess I would say it just wasn't... <laughs> crippling to him. The Pearsons also said Spencer had suffered a number of hits while playing high school football that may have impacted him negatively, but prosecutors questioned that assertion. You testified earlier that, I mean, I understand you said it was an estimation of 10,000 yeah. hits, but yeah. those are hits. It's fair to say not all to his head hits on the field, correct? Um, well, I, I think it would be safe to say that it the, the, they were hits to the head based on his position. He was playing defensive um, defensive line for almost his entire football time frame. And so when you talk about this, you're just estimating based on games and practices and I am. Per, per game. And so that's similar to any, at least I think it's fair to say, similar to any football player in his position. Correct. The man who saved Madison's life, Kennedy Armstrong, spoke about the trauma that he suffered from this attack. Uh, this guy could not handle a breakup and proceeded, or proceeded to plan the murder of Madison. His actions tended to leave the family grieving while he took the cowardly way out. 
A man who could not handle a breakup decided to take the time to stalk, stab, and try to kill a young woman. Doing so impacted many lives, families, friends, and those in our community. Laying in the trauma one unit shams on the night of June 3rd, 2023 left me with many thoughts. First being, are those women alive? Second being, why did this happen? Third, will my hand ever work again? I had my hand essentially cut in half, skin flapping, seeing your own bones, along with your own blood spewing from a severed artery was something most can't imagine. I had to control and monitor every single breath to ensure I wasn't losing any more blood than I already had, all while separating myself to make sure our amazing first responders got to Madison and Miss Jackie first. God bless the first responders. Laying in the trauma unit that night, all I was praying for was to help Madison and Miss Jackie. After nine hours of being in the main trauma unit, you know, I finally got my own room. I thought that would bring a chance to sleep, however, that, that did not. I kept praying for the woman, whom at the time I did not know, and also refusing to close my eyes because every time I did, I saw the stabbings again, including the cowardly act he did to himself. And then it was time for Madison Shemitz to speak. With the help of a deputy, Madison walked to the witness stand to confront the man who nearly took her life. Before I begin, I'd like to preface the statement by explaining just how incredibly difficult this is. To not only set my pride aside, but to vulnerably open up in front of this courtroom, the defendant and his family is difficult. I say this because throughout this process, I've carried myself with grace, and truthfully, I have not opened up in front of others the way I'm about to. I say I'm setting my pride aside because truthfully, I do not believe the defendant nor his family deserve to hear any of the negative ways this experience has impacted me, let alone get to hear all of the positive things I've done after it. Madison Shemitz then described how the brief relationship she had with Spencer Pearson impacted her so negatively. Throughout the barely six months I was in a relationship with him, I had felt stripped of everything I knew I truly deserved. I knew not only did I not feel happy, I felt suffocated, trapped, manipulated, and controlled. I knew that the relationship was giving me far less than what I deserved. As someone who truly takes pride in the human they know they are, I knew I had every right to put myself first and leave the relationship. Madison went on to describe how she felt fear ending the relationship with Spencer Pearson. Not even 24 hours after the breakup, the stalking began. As I innocently sat in the Davis Park parking lot with a few friends after a softball game, the defendant decided to show up. Not only did he show up uninvited, he showed up unannounced and unwarranted. Then Madison Shemitz recalled what happened that day at Mr. Chubby's Wings. June 3rd, 2023 was without a doubt the absolute worst, most traumatic day of my life, and I remember every single second of it. After going back and forth on what to do, we paid our check and decided to leave the restaurant. At 4.28, myself, my mom, my friend, and her mom all stood up and walked out. Never in a million years did I think that I would never end up making it to my car. I remember walking to the parking lot, texting a friend back, and taking a picture of the defendant's truck. I did this knowing I had to continue to keep track of the defendant's behaviors and appearances for the straining order we were in the process of trying to obtain. I remember finally reaching my car and hearing my mother scream. Knowing my mother, I could hear her fear. I could hear that whatever was happening was not good. This was when, at 4.30 p.m. on June 3rd, 2023, I turned around and saw the defendant running towards me faster than I had ever seen him run before. Not knowing what was coming next, I turned and attempted to go in the opposite direction. This was when the defendant had grabbed me. I hit the ground and began feeling the attack. I remember being on my hands and knees, begging for the defendant to get off me, with my screams slowly being, becoming more and more silent. I remember staring at the ground, my thoughts being muffled by my mother's constant scream. The, the scream that had first alarmed me did not stop throughout the entirety of the attack, and frankly, I can still hear it to this day. Madison Shemitz spoke for 40 minutes about fighting to survive this attack, how she prayed that she would live. She was paralyzed and then spent months and months in physical therapy, and she still suffers from PTSD. <laughs> but she graduated from high school and is now in college. Your Honor, I could talk for hours on end about the way that the defendant has neg negatively impacted each of our lives. But I think after each of these impact statements, it is apparent, it is real, it is constant, and it is daily. Every day is a reminder of the trauma we all endured on June 3rd, 2023. Every day I'm affected by the physical and mental impacts of the defendant's actions. And every day is a reminder of just how cr cruel, monstrous, and evil the defendant truly is. There is no excuse for his actions. There will never be an excuse. On that day, the defendant chose to try and take my life. He chose to try and take my mother's life, and he chose to severely harm a good and innocent stranger. Your Honor, I can confidently say I am one of the least deserving human beings to have, go th to, have to go through what I have been forced to go through. Your Honor, this is something I will have to deal with for the rest of my life, something I should never have to deal with, and something the defendant should never have the opportunity to do again. 
Your Honor, on June 3rd, 2023, I was given my own life sentence by the defendant, and I plead with you that the defendant receives the same justified sentence and deserve punishment. Thank you. Spencer Pearson made a plea for mercy, apologizing to Madison, her mom, and Kennedy Armstrong. Your Honor, I'm here before you today to take responsibility for my actions of June 3rd, 2023. And most importantly, I'm here to express my sincerest apology to Madison, Ms. Roger, Mr. Armstrong. I'm sure third, June 3rd was the worst day of their lives. It was also the worst day of mine and always will be. On this day, I hurt three innocent people. I think of my terrible crimes committed every second of every day. It's on my mind constantly, and this will never, ever change. I pray that Madison, Miss Roger, and Mr. Armstrong make full recoveries. I can't begin to imagine what I've put them through and the negative effects I've had on everyone involved. I understand the anger and hatred they all have for me. I will never understand any negativity or ill will directed towards my family regarding this subject. They did not do this. I did. There are good people trying to do good in this world, not evil. My parents tried their absolute best to get me help with the limited knowledge and the limited time they had. They are completely devastated and they want their son to get help more than anything. Your Honor, I try my best to live myself after what I've done, but I just don't know how. I need serious help, and I have for a long time. And I'm so sorry for what this has come to, and I'm so sorry for my actions. In the end, the judge was not swayed by Spencer Pearson's words or the words of his parents or the psychologist who evaluated him. That crime, the crime that was described and shown here today, and the result of that crime and the impact of this crime that it has had on all three of the victims in this case leads this court to the conclusion that any deviation below the guidelines is inappropriate. So I'm declining and denying the defendant's motion for downward departure. Spencer Pearson sat at the defense table awaiting the judge's decision, seemingly resigned to his fate. I have considered the mitigating circumstances that have been <clears throat> well presented by the defense in this case. Mr. Kachurgis, you have done an excellent job in representing your client and providing this court with mitigation. And this court has carefully thought and weighed and considered your client's age, his lack of any prior criminal history, the fact that he was suffering from a depressive, clearly a depressive state of mind when this happened. his age. You are sentenced to serve the remainder of your life in prison. Spencer Pearson has been sentenced to life in prison. Madison Shemitz and her family are now suing Spencer Pearson's parents in the restaurant where she was eating when she was stabbed for $50 million. The suit claims Pearson's parents did not get him the help that he needed, and the restaurant failed to provide security to protect Madison and her mom, Jackie. And that's it for this episode of Crime Fix. I'm Anjanette Levy. Thanks so much for being with me. I'll see you back here next time.